Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about recurrence relations and looking through solving them with an inductive approach. So I uh, will first talk about what are recurrence relations, um, why do we want to have closed term solutions in the first place, and then go through both the top down and bottom up approaches of solving them iteratively. And then I'll also note that we will cover other approaches later in the class for solving recurrence relations, but these approaches are really good um, when you have a recurrent relation referring to just the term before it. Um, so for example, it wouldn't be great to do something like um, a to the n equals a to the n minus one plus a to the n minus two would not work very well to solve it iteratively, but we will learn approaches for that later on. So without further ado, let's get started. What is a recurrence relation? So the idea here is that we're writing something in terms of previous terms. So for example, I could say, okay, a to the n equals uh, we'll say 5 a to the n minus 1 plus 6, and then it will give some initial condition. Um, maybe we'll say a0 equals negative 1. And so here I could find the next term from prior terms. So I could say, okay, I know a0 equals negative 1. So then a1 equals negative 5 times a0 plus 6, which is negative 5 times negative 1 plus 6. Okay, that's, uh, or here I didn't have a negative. So that would become uh, negative five plus six is negative one. I can say, okay, a two, it, that's um, five a one plus six, which is uh, five times one, uh, times negative one, times positive one, plus six, which is 11, a three, that's five times 11 plus six, that's 55 plus six, 61. And so, okay, I can find a few terms uh, solving it this way and this would work, but what if I wanted to find a term that's really large? Say I wanted to find um, A of, I don't know, 10 to the ninth. This would be really tricky to, to, to solve. Uh, I have to go, okay, A4, A5, all the way up to a very large number. Um, so I wanna be able to do it to be able to find um, a to the n, not in terms of the prior terms, these like a to the n minus one or five a n minus one, but in terms of just relating to n. And so to do that, um, I wanna do something with a, a closed form solution. So um, kind of the top down approach is, with well, this one we're basically starting from a to n and we're gonna make some substitutions continually until we can see a pattern. And then we'll try to figure out how to relate things just in terms of n. So We'll start out, okay, we know that um, we're dealing with uh, yeah, this one here, a sub n equals five n minus one plus six. So I know that's what a sub n is, is five n minus one plus six. So I know that a sub n minus one is equal to five times a sub n minus one, um, n minus two plus six. And so I can rewrite this as saying, Okay, a sub n is equal to five times five a sub n minus two plus six plus six. And so here um, it's kind of important to note that the parentheses are, um, the, this plus six is still with, within this, it's, it's still part of this a to the n minus one term. So it's inside the parentheses. So it's not just like a plus six here. Instead, uh, we can then maybe rewrite this um, as saying five squared a minus one plus five times six plus six. So we are multiplying this by five here. I could then make another substitution and say, okay, five squared a sub n minus two, that's five times a minus three plus six. And then I have the plus five times six plus six. Um, I'll rewrite this as five cubed a n minus three plus five squared times six. And then here I might actually say, okay, this is five to the first plus six plus five to the zero times six, uh, just to kind of think about how does this work generally. And so you might think, okay, why, why not just simplify this to okay, five squared is 25 times six. It's actually helpful to, to see the patterns uh, to kind of leave it in this form where, okay, I see, okay, I know I, know I have minus three right now and I know I have a three here and then I have like kind of two, one, zero. So maybe now I'll try to try to write it instead of um, 
instead of going from a n minus three to a n minus four, I'll try going just to a more general, um, I can go to some general a sub n minus k. So what would that, how would that affect things? So it looks like here I had three, um, I was going to n minus three, then I had a three in the exponent. So I'd, I'd say, okay, this is five to the k times a sub n minus k. And then here, this is like three minus one, three minus two and so forth. So then I'm adding five to the k minus one times six plus five to the k minus two times six and so forth. And then I'll end with uh, five to the k minus k plus one or um, just like five to the first times six and then five to the zero times six. And so then maybe I'll, I'll also write, I can, okay, I can notice that I'm multiplying all these things times six, maybe I'll just write them together. Um, so I'll say six times 5k minus one plus 5k minus two and so forth, all the way up to five to the first plus five to the zero. And so now, um, I guess kind of like the replacement like now with the top down approach is we're going to let our n be equal to k. So now if we do this, we can get this, get into the form of our base case. And we'll say, okay, this is five to the k times a n minus n, or rather five to the n times a n minus n. And so now this, this is a zero. Um, and so we'll be able to replace uh, this with a zero, which is great to get rid of all of these, I guess the dependence on this, like the prior terms here. So then I can say, okay, this is five a zero plus something. Um, and so now we just have to simplify this side. And so you might look, think this looks pretty similar to something we've talked about before. So you might recall the um, geometric summation. So I could, I could rewrite this as saying, okay, this is equal to five a zero plus six, and then all sum from um, I equals zero to n minus one, and I'm having five to the I here. So yeah, I have five to the zero, five to the first, um, all the way up to five to the n minus two plus five to the n minus one. And so the rule we have for geometric series is, um, summations is, okay, we can say we have J equals zero to n, and then uh, we have something that it's like r to the j, and this is equal to r to the j plus one minus one over r minus one. And so you might think we can't directly apply this uh, because here we're going from j equals zero to n, and here we have an n minus one, but we actually could set, um, maybe we'll say, okay, I'll let like m equal n minus one. Um, and so then we can apply this rule here and say, okay, we have five a zero plus six times five to the m minus one over five minus one. And so here we know that m was equal to n minus one. So this is, um, oh, this is m plus one here. So we had m plus one, which is n minus one plus one or just n. And so I guess after we made the substitution, then we can simplify things a bit more. So a zero we said was negative one, I believe, yes. Um, so then we get, oh, we have an n term here. So then we get um, negative one times five to the n plus six over four is the same thing as three halves. So three halves times five to the N minus one. So then we can just do a little bit of algebra and say, okay, um, this is three halves times five to the N minus three halves. And then I have a negative one times five to the N. And so if I um, add these terms together here, then I'll get, um, negative one plus one and a half is one half. So one half times five to the n 
minus three halves. Okay, so then we have what we think is uh, a closed form solution of this recurrence relation. And so one way to check that um, after you've built what you think is a closed form solution is to just plug in a number. Maybe we'll say, okay, A3 is equal to one half five cubed minus three halves. And uh, five times five is 25, times five is 125. So we have 125 minus three over two, that's 122 over two, 61. And that's the same thing as what we saw up above, we got um, 61 as our A3. And so we can see, okay, yeah, this um, kind of intuitively verify that this does work in the more top-down approach. So what do we do with this top-down approach? We started off, okay, we, I know what A sub N is. I can write that as five, A minus one plus six. Then I'll replace this A sub N minus one with some term in terms of A, A sub N minus two. I rewrite that um, to get maybe some things that can help me with the pattern eventually. And then I replace A sub N minus two with A N minus three. So a term for that. And then do kind of do the same thing I could do more terms though, I kind of need more to see the pattern. And then I'll write it in terms of some general K. Okay. Um, or if you want, and yeah, and, and then um, if a kind of a pattern emerges and then I'll write, I'll replace uh, K with N to get it in terms of A0. If you wanted to, you could uh, omit this like K step and just go in terms of, of N, but I think it's helpful to, to see kind of the more, yeah, this approach to it there. And then after that, it becomes, um, now I don't have, I only have ends in my final answer at, at the, from this stage on. And so now it's just, uh, how do you simplify it? So we might, uh, this is the same um, as answer as what this ultimately is with the um, one half um, five to the N, and this is an N here, number three. Oh, I guess N here, yeah, um, minus three halves, but it's, uh, nice to simplify it so then we can use a summation rule in this case the geometric sum um, to simplify there. That's kind of the general approach for the, the more top-down approach. Uh, whereas with the, the bottom up, what are we doing? We're saying okay I knew that a sub n equals 5 a minus 1 plus 6 and we said a 0 equals negative 1. So now this is, okay I'll start with, I'll start with a1. I know that a1 equals 5 a0 plus six. And then I'm gonna kind of keep building up and I'm gonna write these terms, everything in terms of A0. So I know that A2, well that's um, five, A1 plus six. And I know that A1 is five A0 plus six. So I'll set that in five A0 plus six plus six. Um, and I'll then I'll rewrite that as five squared A0 plus five times six plus six. And then I'll um, say, okay, I know A3 equals five, A2 plus six. I'll again um, substitute in writing A0 or A2 um, for this, um, this A2 in terms of um, A0. And so then I have five times five squared A0 plus five times six plus six. So then I get five cubed A0 and then uh, we'll get, we have a plus six here as well. So then we get five squared times six plus five times six plus six. And then here's where I could do if I wanted to the um, five to the first, cause five to the first is five and then five to the zero is one just to help me kind of see the pattern there. So then um, after you've done a few of these, then you can, instead of writing it like A3, A4, I would write it in terms of AK and say, okay, this, uh, for some k, I have five ak minus one plus six, um, and this is equal to kind of applying this pattern here. Five to the k a zero plus okay here I had a three here I have a two, so I get five k minus one times six plus five k minus two times six and so forth all the way down to five to the first times six, uh, five to the zero times six. And so then I could do kind of a similar approach. Maybe I'll plug in, okay, I know that a zero is negative one. So I have negative one times five to the K. And then I have six times, um, if you recall the kind of summation trick we did before, 
will go from j equals zero. So I'm having five, uh, and then we're taking, taking five to the j. So I have here five to the zero, plus five to the first, plus five to the second, and so forth. Let me go all the way up to n minus one. Oh, and I guess here, so that was in terms of k, then we can set let k equal n. Um, and we'll write it in these terms. So then I had uh, having five to the k, five to the n here. And yeah, so once I, I've got it to this form, then I can again apply. So I, I end up using a similar trick as, as the top-down approach. So I'll use this um, simplify the geometric summation here. And so I end up with six um, times five to the n minus one plus one, which in this case is n minus one over five minus one, and that's four. So then I'll simplify and get negative one times five n plus six over four or three halves or 1.5 times five n minus one plus one, simplifies out and then minus one. So then we get negative one plus 1.5 times five to the n minus 1.5. And then that equals uh, 0 0.5 or like one half times five to the n minus 1.5, which is the same solution we did as uh, the top down approach. And so kind of how I recommend solving these problems is try whatever approach feels more comfortable to you. Maybe it feels more natural to start from the bottom and work your way up. And maybe it starts to more, feels more comfortable to work from the top and, start your, and go down. And then you could always try the other approach as well and then see if you get the same answer, which you should. And then you can always check by verifying that your solution works for some small A, maybe A3 or, or A4, or A2, something like that. Um, and so, yeah, both approaches will work generally most of the time. Um, they're equivalent. And so, yeah, um, that's kind of how to do the iterator approach in a nutshell. So feel free to post any follow-ups on Piazza and we'll be happy to address them. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.